Hey, today I want to talk about five bass guitar pedals every bass player should own. I'll see you inside the video. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of our Real World Bass Heroes series. I'm James from eBass Guitar. I'm here with the incredible Freddie Draper. Now, Freddie is a self-confessed gear nerd. He loves gear. So today, we're gonna take you through the top five pedals that all bass players should own. But before we get going, quick favor to ask. I was staggered when I looked at some YouTube statistics a few weeks back that over 80% of people who watch this channel on a regular basis are not subscribed. My aim, Freddie's aim too now. My aim too. Is to get this down to 50% over the next six or months or so. What does that mean for you guys? The bigger the channel get, the more subscribers we get, the bigger the reach, the better quality content we can put out, the better guests we can get on like Freddie, the more love we can put out into the base world. So please hit that red subscribe button so we can keep putting great content out there. So last of all, I want you to know there's a completely free bass guitar gear guide that comes with this video. If you want to download your copy, there's a link in the description below where you can grab your free copy. So pedal number one, Freddie, what have you got for us? So the number one pedal that I would suggest every bass guitar player gets hold of is a chromatic tuner with a mute function in it. So what model tuner have you got there? So we have a TC Electronic Polytune. Now what this does is if I, if I play the bass with it off, the bass will come out of the amp. If I hit it, it will actually silence the bass and display the tuning needle, meaning that I can tune in silence. So if I can't hear myself on stage, if, it, if it's a noisy stage and I need to tune, say in the middle of a song when I'm not playing the bass line, I can tune up in silence and then come back in, in my entry, perfectly in tune. And the great advantage of using a pedal like this over say using the fifth fret method or the harmonics that some guys may know, or even a tuning fork, is you can do this in complete silence in the middle of a gig, as you said. So let's move on to pedal number two. What have you got for us? So pedal number two, this is a compressor pedal. So what a compressor does is it essentially smooths our sound out dynamically. So it brings down the volume of the bits that are really loud and it loudens the bits that are very, very quiet. So if I play with a lot of dynamics in my sound, say I do some slap, I'm playing quite loud. You can hear that the, the pops are much, much louder. If I put my compressor on, and I'm gonna set this up to quite an extreme sound, I'll really squish the sound. So effectively, what it does is it gives you a much, much smoother dynamic sound. So if you're having trouble playing consistently or consistent volumes, a compressor is one of those tools which can really help you out. It's particularly helpful if you're doing any chordal playing or harmonic stuff. If I just quickly show you an example using some harmonics, you hear how the second, the, the, the second note, the first harmonic I played is being lost. If I put the compressor on, you hear that it's a lot smoother. Everything, is, everything has been grabbed hold of by the compressor and there's a really nice sustain to it. And what I find when I use compressor pedals is the effect is often quite profound to me, but to other people, it's quite subtle, which probably when you're watching this video, you're not hearing a whole bunch because it's often more of a kinesthetic feeling kind of thing, isn't it? Totally. I think th there's a sort of a slang in the industry of it's the best compressor you've never heard. Absolutely fantastic. Cool, let's leave it there. Let's move on to pedal number three. What have you got for us? So pedal number three is one of my absolute favorite effects. This is overdrive. And what does it do? So overdrive, it's a sort of saturation technique. It fizzes the note up a little bit. And in terms of what it does to the waveform, it compresses it and makes it a bit more consistent, more sausage-like. So. Go and show us, let's hear it. So with this, I'll set up quite an extreme sound. Oh, it's the sound of rock music, isn't it? It is. This is the same pedal that Flea has. This is the very first pedal I ever bought. I went to the shop and the guy said, this is the one that he does around the world with. And I was like, I so, want it. So name us a few bass players which are renowned for using the distortion pedal. So for me, it was Chris Walsenheim from Muse that really turned me onto this sound. Flea from the Red Hot Chili oh, Peppers. Yeah. Justin Chancellor from the band Tool. Um, and you're forgetting something major. Getty, Getty Lee. Lee from the band Rush, of course. So if you want the sound of rock, this is the pedal you need yeah. to get. It's really important with overdrive to remember that when you add something, you take something else away. Pedal number four, I'm looking forward to this one. 
For me, this is the sound of funk. Tell us what pedal number four is. So this is an octave pedal, or sometimes written as an octave. So what this does is it duplicates the sound of my bass an octave lower. And this particular model, the OC2, which is a very infamous type of octave used a lot in the 1980s, this can actually duplicate the sound an octave lower than that, two octaves. So Show us what it sounds like. So you've got three knobs on here. We've got oct one, oct two, and uh, I think this is just called direct level. So if we turn the direct level up, this is just the sound of the bass normally. If I put in the sound of oct one, it's a little bit dusty, so there's a bit of fizz. You're starting to get that synth bass sound, aren't you? Very much so. If I take the direct level down and I just have octave one, it's going to give a, a sort of sine wave. There's going to be Go on, there's not a lot of clarity in it. Why don't we put that second octave down? And this is two octaves lower, so I'm playing G at the 10th fret. Oh, it's really flexible, isn't it? If I take the tone knob off and just use the neck pick. So pedal number five, what have you got for us? So we have a preamp. We have a sans amp from Tech 21. Sans amp literally means without the amp. When would you use a preamp? So a preamp mirrors the image of what you find on the head of your cab and amp. So what we've got here is an Agula Tone Hammer 500 amplifier. And I've also got the Agula Tone Hammer preamp controls or their tone controls in pedal format here. This is called the Tone Hammer pedal. So why would you want the preamp of an amplifier in pedal format. If you don't want to use a cab, you can still get that great sound directly from the pedal. So you can go straight through the PA, you can go straight into your headphones. So I use this kind of pedal a lot when I'm practicing at home or recording videos sometimes. I use this pedal a lot when I'm using in-ear monitors to give me that extra little bit of control. It's very popular at the moment because we've got silent stages going on a lot where many, many sound engineers and venues are actually trying to strip out the gear. But apart from replicating the tone controls, what else can you use a preamp pedal for? So if you crank a preamp pedal, you can actually get more of an overdriven sound. So if I, if I play this through, this is emulating an Ampeg SVT kind of sound. If I maybe take the overdrive up on it and I scoop the mids out and maybe I boost the presence a bit to get a bit more snap. Sounds a bit like Rush. So it'll give you a ton more tonal shaping, won't it? Absolutely. And I guess you can also set it up for a slap sound if you want a different EQ for that. Turn it off. So you can clearly hear this effect that the preamp is having. Sometimes it can be a really subtle effect, sometimes it can be really obnoxious and in your face. Absolutely. It's a really handy piece of kit to add to your arsenal. So there you have it, Freeze, five top bass guitar pedals. Those are super useful. Go out, buy them, experiment with them. I'm sure you'll have a ton of fun. But there's one more that I want Freddie to show you today. This is Freddie's Jazz Bass Special, which was played by the legendary Duff McKeegan from Guns N' Roses. Duff McKeegan used one more effect. And what effect's that? Chorus. And you will have heard that on the legendary introduction to Sweet Child of Mine. So what I want to do is finish this lesson with Freddie and the chorus pedal and the introduction to Sweet Child of Mine. That's the end of today's pedal. Please do let us know what your favorite bass guitar pedal is in the comments below. Also download our bass guitar gear guide, link in the description below. And also, if you wanna push your bass playing forward, head over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus and our one-to-one -one program where you can work directly with Freddie if that's what you wanna do, called Bass Lab VIP. There's a link in the description below. Cheers, I've been James from eBass Guitar. Thank you for having me, I've been Freddie. Cheers, catch you next time.